Hello, thanks for tuning in, thanks for joining me. If you've been following the last few episodes, you'll know we've been building up to this one and the next one. Um, For me, this is the gold dust in our adult lives. The stuff about childhood and where it leads to explains so much about what goes wrong, especially in our lives. And it massively falls into the category of, I can't understand why we're not taught this in school, especially in our teenage years, our early 20s. If we were taught it, it would save us all so much pain and wasted time and grief as the years go on. You might start seeing what I mean as this episode progresses. It's worth me saying up front that this is a complex area, as they all are. Whenever you hear anybody talking about psychology or human behavior or the way that we interact, something that frustrates me and is frustrating me at the moment in the world we live in is people love to try and make out it's really simple and you can just nail one thing and that's it. I don't believe that for a second. I think there are lots of complex things that come together, but there are some general principles. So this is very much an introduction to this topic. I am by no means an expert. If it resonates with you, if you like what I'm talking about, if as I'm talking about it, you think, shit, that that massively rings a bell in my life, I'd encourage you to look further into it, dig into it. There's loads of experts on this, books you can get, and just search for the topic on the internet and you'll find all kinds. It links massively to what we were talking about. The the two episodes about how childhood affects our lives and especially the interview with Ed Tronick and Claudia Gold. If you haven't watched that or listened to that, I would recommend going back and listening or watching to that before you watch or listen to this one. You don't need to, this will should make sense as a standalone, as a standalone show but it will make more sense if you've already listened to that other stuff because basically this is all about how those bonds, those attachments we form when we're children play out right the way through our lives. So again, you'll hear the same themes. We don't, we're not brought into this world knowing how to form relationships with other people. That is something we learn from our caregivers, from our parents usually, and from the people around us as we grow up. And then we build on those building blocks as we go through life and we form relationships and we figure out other things. So if you've ever wondered why lots of relationships end up in places where you think, I feel like I've married mum or dad, or you'll hear cliches like that online or in movies, or you end up going out with the same type of people all the time who have the same type of character traits, or you look across your mates and you feel like we all have similar relationships. The women all stand on one side complaining about the same thing and the men all stand on the other side complaining about the same thing. This is the stuff that explains a lot of it. As I say, there can be more complex stuff behind it, but there is lots in this that explains all of that. We'll get stuck straight into it. Basically what happens when you're a child is you learn attachment strategies. So the still face experiment from Ed Tronic and that episode, the interview with them is massive on this because what you're seeing happening in, in those experiments and in what we talked about is how we learn to attach to other humans. And there were basically this, this theory, it's called attachment theory basically and it, it started in the 50, 1950s and been developed since then. And it's sort of agreed amongst that community, the scientific community now who specialize in this, that there are four main attachment styles. There is secure attachment, anxious attachment, avoidant attachment, and anxious avoidant attachment. And we'll run through each one. As I'm talking about them, have a think about what you think you might be and have a think about the other people you know in your life, your family, your mates, what they might be. See if you can spot any patterns. So. Secure people are generally comfortable alone. They are independent, but they can also display affection. They can be in a relationship. They are comfortable in either scenario. They are not clingy, they are not needy. They know how to set clear, healthy boundaries in their life and to basically interact with other humans and inside romantic relationships in a clear and healthy way. The research says that 50% of society is secure. I I am amazed by that statistic, to be honest, because, and this might say more about my life and the place I live and the people who I know and have met over the years, but to this point in my, in my life, I, there's no way I've met 50% of people who fall into that category. 
the people I do know and I have been surrounded with my whole life fall into the next two categories really which firstly is the anxious attachment style which is basically and again this is a summary of a, of a complex character but um, people who are nervous and stressed in relationships they're needy they don't like being alone they don't like being single so this is the person who you know who splits up maybe this is you maybe it's someone else splits up with someone and they're in another relationship within weeks or days sometimes they don't like being single they can be irrational they can be overly emotional this is the person who chases after somebody else all the time in order to get into a relationship with them and that fits nicely into the next category which is the avoidant attachment style and the avoidant attachment style you might start seeing a pattern forming here is independent they like their own space they can be commitment phobes so do not like being in relationships and when they are in relationships they can often say that they are suffocated they are crowded they need more of their own space is that starting to make any ring any bells yet in your own life in the lives of the people around you the fourth category is anxious avoidant people which is basically a combination of anxious and avoidant and is a very dangerous combination because what that basically means is it's people who are both in need of being close to somebody but also repel away from it which as you can imagine causes problems we'll go into more of that as we go through so the thing to remember in this is it's similar to what we've talked about in the past about black and white thinking this is not a black and white thing you you are not just secure or just anxious or just avoidant you are a mix of all of these things on scales so there's a, there's an online test you can do that tells you if you answer a load of questions what your attachment style is and it basically ranks you on all of them and gives you a, an indication of what you are i did that test a few years ago when i first got into this area of my life and unsurprisingly i came out very high on the avoidance scale and also measured on the anxious scale i was not very secure at all back then and what i'd seen in my life is i was very much the classic avoidant male something that's worth saying and again this is a generalization but you might have spotted already that anxious attachment styles tend to be women and avoidant attachment styles tend to be men that's not everybody i know people who are the other way around as their predominant attachment style but if you do this online test and i'd recommend you do you'll see that everybody is a bit of a mix and the good news is no matter where you are on this scale you can change over time so the, all the work i've done over the past two years i continue to do the test every few months and i've moved very much from heavily avoidant and a little bit anxious into the secure camp mainly the secure camp um, and can feel that in my life to be honest it's it's really noticeable within your own relationships and i'm watching your own behavior and how you interact with other people how much it can shift in a relatively short space of time it, people have different ideas about how much time it should take to, to change yourself in in this life but i'd, I'd say you know, if you're making radical changes within two years of your life you're doing really really well so it is possible to change you can go up or down as well so what can happen is secure people if you, if you are anxious or avoidant and you happen to get into a relationship with a secure person they can pull you up to to be secure as well but you it, it is possible and i think this is probably more likely in lots of situations that an anxious or avoidant person pulls a secure person down what happens most often and again you may have already started noticing this is that anxious people and avoidant people attract each other and this is one of the strangest things in our society and causes so many problems and no one ever talks about and none of us know about it and that's why when i first started learning about it it was very much one of those topics of fucking hell why don't we learn about this earlier because it's everywhere and we we see it as being normal it's one of the reasons i don't like we talk about language a lot in these shows one of the reasons I don't like the word normal is what normal tends to mean in normal language is most people do it but the problem is that just because most people do something doesn't mean it's good there's loads of things that most people do that aren't good and this is one of them being in dysfunctional romantic relationships is so 
ingrained in our Western society, in our Western culture, it's almost frightening once you start to learn about it because the anxious and avoidant characters in a relationship together, the universe pulls them together because they feel as though they complete the missing parts of the other person. So when you start learning about this stuff, it becomes very difficult to watch. For example, Hollywood romantic movies. Because if I say the line to you, you complete me, most people listening or watching to this will know that's a very famous line from Jerry Maguire, very powerful romantic scene. And this is what this is what we're brought up believing in as humans, that our romantic relationships should complete each other. We should be 50% each and it's like the it's like the the old sort of stories where you've got two sides of the same broken coin and they come together and they make one whole and that theory in itself is absolutely fundamentally flawed to have a healthy romantic relationship you need two whole people two people who by themselves are 100 percent and they come together and complement each other that's how that's how healthy relationships work but what we're brought up in society and we're brought up through our families and through all of this attachment stuff is that we think that we find someone else and they complete us. And that's how you get into these relationships and you'll have seen these over the years. You may even have participated in them of the push and pull relationships. So as one party goes towards the other one, they run away and then as the other one comes back and goes the other way the other one is attracted it's classic stuff and it's really difficult to talk about actually because it's dysfunctional and it's not a nice thing to realize about your life your own life the life of people around you and don't get me wrong this is on a scale so as with everything else we talk about you can have a low level of dysfunction you can be you know low on the anxious or avoidant scale and with somebody else who's low on the scale and you've just got a bit of dysfunction in there but this goes right the way up to heavily dysfunctional relationships and when you start learning more about the psychology and the emotion behind this topic you start to see why people stay inside relationships that are unhealthy and it's often blamed on one party but something i would Something I would always say when I talk to people about this topic is, think about it like this. If you want to figure out on a, on a scale, on a wide scale, let's say zero, let's say 100 is absolutely secure and zero is absolutely non-secure, anxious avoidance. So you want to know where you are on a general one-dimensional scale, not, not the multi-dimensional that it is, just, just for the sake of simplicity. If you want to know where you are on that scale, I think the easiest way to do it, and this is just my own theory, is to look at your partner or to look at the relationships you have with other people, your boss, your co-workers, your friends, but especially your romantic partner if you have one, because that's where you see this the most. And think, ask yourself where they are on the scale. And wherever you think they are on the scale, that's pretty much where you are. Because if you weren't around the same level on the scale, you would not be in the relationship. Because this is what happens when a secure person enters into a relationship with someone who is anxious or avoidant. If it's unhealthy, the secure person leaves. They walk away. It's only when you have your own emotional and psychological issues that you stay inside an unhealthy relationship. So if you look at your partner and you think they're a psychopath, if you look at them and think, or if you constantly think, I'm always attracting psychopaths. I see this, it's, it's interesting for me going back inside the dating world and even looking on Tinder and the number of people who have this, women who have this as their profile. I'm constantly meeting knobheads. I'm constantly meeting arseholes and psychopaths. I read a great article once and it just had a line in it that said, I've got some bad news for you. And it linked to another article. And that article was about, you attract what you are basically. So you attract your own level. If you, are, if you struggle in relationships and you struggle inside a relationship, you struggle attracting the type of person you want to, it's all about the same principles we've talked about before. It's about taking responsibility. It's not about the other person, it's about you. You're attracting your equivalent on the scale. So if you want to attract a secure person who's healthy and independent and sets their own clear boundaries and can be good alone or with you and have this healthy relationship, you need to be in that place first. So you need to take control of your own life. 
do the work necessary to become more secure and then you will attract naturally that type of person and when you come across people who aren't secure who are anxious avoidant or both it's easier to leave it's easier to walk away because you are secure you know what you're looking for you can communicate properly you can set your boundaries so this is all really important and it's really important to notice as well how the messaging we get from society so this this starts out with the lessons you learn from your parents and the people around you and then it goes through life so you start looking at your mates and this is why we end up in problems where you have i've been at so many parties like this over the years where the girls are on one side all complaining about the same thing and the men are on the other side all complaining about the same thing and it's because of this stuff we all i've said for a long time now even before i knew about all of these topics we all think we've got these special lives but we're basically living the same lives in different houses and it's because of this because go back through the generations i've said this before this is not a blame game for your parents they were taught the same thing by their parents and they were taught the same thing so as i learned this and started looking at the people around me it was like looking at family trees and everybody everybody's in the same type of relationship because most of the men i know have been brought up to be avoidant to have an avoidant attachment style because of the way that their parents dynamics were most women i've met along my life have been brought up with an anxious attach attachment style and those two attachment styles attract each other so everywhere i look i see relationships to a certain degree on the scale which are pretty much the anxious attachment style and the avoidant attachment style coming together and that's why we get these same dynamics everywhere and then we see it everywhere else and we think it's normal so we think it's okay we see it in movies and we think it's what we should aspire to like one of my favorite ones is pretty woman like i must have watched that film a thousand times when i was a kid because my sister loved it the messages in films like that are insane when we think that's how we're being raised to think romantic relationships should be it's crazy absolutely crazy that story is about a dysfunctional billionaire i think he's a billionaire maybe a multimillionaire, a dysfunctional, handsome billionaire who hires a prostitute and ends up falling in love with her and then she helps save his life. It's a typical dysfunctional, you complete me type story. I think the end scene, it's funny how I remember this stuff, the end scene is something like he goes and saves her and says to her, what happens, because that's what she says early in the movie, I want a white knight to come and save me and he comes and says to her what happens after the white knight saves you and she says i save him right back and everyone cries and it's lovely it's bullshit it's dysfunctional attachment that relationship would never work in a million years there would be murder because they have both got dysfunctional attachment styles for that relationship to work in reality it would need so much work from both of them to become secure and to be able to get to a point where they can interact properly and healthily. But this is the message we get given to us as we grow up and we think it's normal. We actually aspire to it. We teach our men in society that they need to be white knight saving women. And we teach our women that they need to be saved by somebody. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. Um, so it's worth noticing that when you're watching these movies from now on, I've probably ruined a lot of romantic comedies for you so be it maybe one day we'll get to a point where they make movies that help people's psychology and emotions rather than make us all fucked up more than we already are so think about this if you always meet the same type of person if inside the relationship you are already in if you're in one you have the same problems over and over again it's the same point so do the online test figure out what your attachment style is ask your partner if they are open to it to do the same test and figure out what their attachment style is you could probably already guess what your predominant style is from what i've said already you'll know if you if you're honest with yourself if you listen to your subconscious and not your ego and your intellect trying to tell you how great you are you already know deep down when i talk about this stuff what you are and what your partner is and the the great thing about learning about this stuff is you can overcome it so if you end up in in one of these relationships which is dysfunctional on whatever level on the scale it can be repaired and you can transform it into a wonderful real healthy relationship and if you go back to something ed tronic said in the interview i did with him and claudie gold which i really liked he said 
what we tend to see in this this reflect this is reflected in society as well is we tend to think that these types of relationships these types of sort of d- disputes in society because remember attachment styles are, are with not just with romantic partners but with friends and colleagues and how we interact with other humans in the world he said we tend to see them as chaotic so you know a bad relationship is chaotic it's a mess he said but that's not actually true it's the opposite they're really rigid when you look at them it's a really rigid dance that you go through all the time and when he said that it rang loads of bells with me because when i look back at my old relationships they all had the same pattern they all had this same to in and fro in the same arguments over and over again. I know people who are in their 60s and 70s and I listen to them now and think, I've heard you have that same argument for 40 years. So going back to when I was a little kid, I remember those arguments, the same thing over and over again. And it reminds me of a famous quote by Einstein, I think it was, or attributed to Einstein, which is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And this is the trap most of us fall into in society, in general relationships, and especially in our romantic relationships. And if you can get stuck into this stuff, it will help you to break free of that unhealthy dance, that rigid dance, and to start doing something different, to start figuring out how can we move past this? How can we make it better? Communication is key. Security is key. Being open and honest is key. But the first thing is taking responsibility and figuring out what your own attachment style is what other people's attachment styles are and go from there this as i say it's complex it's by no means straightforward but simple and easy stuff again the idea behind it is quite simple the idea of what types of attachment styles do we have once we know that we can do something about it that's simple the the bit that's not easy is changing but it is possible to change as with everything else. Hope that was interesting. I hope it's helped. I'm going to go on in the next episode because this leads nicely into that to talk about what I think are the root causes, which is we've been building up to this. What I think the root causes are basically for everything in our lives, all of the problems we face. It's a combination of the things we've been talking about. It's something I have experienced in my own life sort of figured out in my own life and now that i've started working with other people and coaching them using the same principles it's been fascinating to see it tested in the real world with other people with their own lives it's fascinating the the results that are coming through it through the work i've been doing it's really powerful i hope you enjoyed it as always if you did like it if you if this resonated with you especially if you know other people if you've got friends who you think oh my god this is them as well forward this episode to them let them listen to it if you like this stuff subscribe to the channel subscribe to the podcast i'll leave it there i'll see you on the next show take care